Many food producers around the world are asking the same question. How can we do more with less? Conventional farming methods are estimated to have left a third of the world's topsoil no longer fertile enough to grow food. And as climate change and water scarcity threaten our growing population, seeking out alternatives is becoming increasingly important. Doing more with less is something farmers in the Netherlands are very familiar with. They're the world's second largest exporter of food by value, despite living in a country that's little bigger than the US state of Maryland. Here in the front there are some very small compartments. That massive output is set to rise even further, thanks to scientists like Professor Leo Marcellus, who's developed a method of farming vertically. We couldn't travel due to the COVID lockdown, so Marcellus gave us a tour of his lab from his mobile. Is that lettuce growing there now? We grow the lettuce under LED lights. So what we are doing is finding, well, what is the optimum color for the plants to grow? But in the end, it's not only about the growth, it's also about the quality. And quality means the taste, the shelf life, but also the nutritional value. Marcellus's model of farming, which builds up instead of out, is capable of producing up to 50 times more food in the same space as a conventional farm. And, because it doesn't need soil, can be replicated just about anywhere on Earth. Here on the right we see some uh, tomato plants. And with every plant, you see a black tube. That is for supplying the water and the nutrients. That's all com controlled by a computer. So the water is collected in the gutter and will be reused. This system's called hydroponics. It requires 95% less water than conventional farming. It's an impressive feat, but one that comes with high energy demands. That's indeed the big bottleneck with respect to sustainability. We want a society which is not using any fossil energy anymore. Well, these type of systems, I expect they will always need electricity. Just how scalable is this model of agriculture to the developing world? So these type of systems, um, they are relatively expensive. So I think for the time being, I see more opportunities in the further developed countries. The work they're doing at Wageningen University is undeniably technically impressive. Controlling conditions to improve yields and efficiency may be the future of farming, but there might be a simpler solution. Here in England, a growing movement of farmers is trying to address the same problem by heading in the opposite direction. They're taking things back to basics, returning to small-scale farms that prioritise low-impact methods and seasonal produce. Josie, hi. Hi. Wow, this is incredible. How long have you been farming here? 17 years. Josie Fernandez is originally from Iowa in the US but moved to southwest England in 2003 for a more self-sufficient lifestyle. Her family's 20-acre plot is completely off-grid and uses no fossil fuels. It's part of a collection of small farms working together to pool costs and tools. Farming like this, they say, is viable from Dorset to the developing world. We have a processing place here where all the smallholders can come and make apple juice and cheese, cut meat, and we have a market garden where we grow vegetables and sell them at the local market. So what's the basic idea behind farming like this? People can use more hand labour to be able to produce food. So your weeding's being done by hand and you don't have to put as many herbicides on the land. On a small holding, you have your own manure that's produced by your animals, that's then composted and put back onto the land as the basis of your fertility. You also don't need to use pesticides because you have loads of biodiversity that attracts insects that can then eat the insects that are a problem. Um, that's called natural pest control. And we're doing it all so that we can live in more connection with nature and produce great food for the local community. Is that economically viable? Doesn't it increase the cost to the consumers? Well, the thing about small holdings is that we sell directly to our local community. So often you're cutting out the supermarkets out of, out of our supply chains, which means Food can be sold directly to the end consumer for the same sort of price that it would be at a supermarket. It sounds wonderful, but isn't it just a kind of 
romantic anti-modernism. 70% of um, global food security is provided by small and family farms now, using only 30% of agricultural resources. You know, India is the largest dairy producer in the world, mm. um, and the average size of the herd is two to four cows there, uh, you know, producing larger volume of milk than any other country. There is a future where we can have all of our food coming from small farms. These small farms rely on what's called layering outputs, having a few animals, as well as small amounts of vegetables and orchard trees right next to each other. This can actually make them far more productive than farms that intensively produce just one thing. This is our market garden, where at the top of the garden, my daughters grow vegetables for our family to use and lots of cut flowers. And the bottom part is where Thomas and Lally a young couple grow vegetables for the local market. The idea of this system is that you have a thriving soil that can provide the macro and micronutrients that the plants need. So basically the thing that makes a plant really healthy is also the, also the thing that makes it delicious. The soil that's here in this market garden, if you look at it, it's really, you know, it's just rich. And all of this will be bringing carbon down from the atmosphere and sequestering it in the soil. We've got trees planted all through the market garden, all around the edges of it, integrated into the farming system. All of that will be drawing down carbon as well, which will be a positive benefit to the atmosphere. Here in England, it's autumn, which means cabbages and kale are ready for eating. The team is packing up the week's pickings for the market. Wageningen's high-tech labs are truly a world away. The innovative solutions they're developing can boost productivity and make our supply chains more resilient. In areas of water scarcity and poor soil, or even in cities, the future of farming could well be vertical. But what this farm in Dorset shows is that doing more with less doesn't just mean producing more, it also means farming in a way that regenerates the land and reconnects communities to the food they eat. The future of food production cannot be solely high-tech. Keeping things simple, local and sustainable has perhaps been part of the answer all along.